Hey, this is Kip, and in this video series, I'm going to walk you through using On Air Company as a career mode add-on for Flight Simulator. It is only available on PC. We don't know whether or not something like this will make its way to Xbox in the future for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but right now, On Air Company works on Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, Prepared, and Flight Sim X on PC. On Air Company did not ask me to make this video series and they are not sponsoring it. I just truly love this app and I've been using it for over a year as my primary career mode add-on. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of a career mode add-on for Flight Simulator, what they basically are is a way to give you more purpose in your flights. I am personally really bad at playing any kind of game or simulator that is just a sandbox where I have to make all the decisions about what to do every time I open it up. So a career mode app like On Air Company will give me objectives so I can do passenger flights, cargo flights, sightseeing and rescue flights, things like that. And what makes On Air Company unique when compared to some of the other career mode add-ons like Skypark and Neofly is that, first of all, it's an online world, so there are ways to interact with other players. So I could build an FBO and sell fuel to other players. They could rent planes that I own and I'll earn money from those things. And finally, you can even make virtual airlines where you and your friends work towards a shared virtual airline to build that up from the ground. Now, because On Air Company covers multiple simulators and it is all online, meaning your entire career mode and progress is saved online and backed up, that means that there is a subscription cost associated with it. And this does turn a lot of people off. But first of all, there's a seven day trial. So at the least, I would recommend checking it out, comparing it to other popular career mode add-ons like Neofly and Skypark. And if you do like it, I wanna point out that it's actually more affordable than you think it is. The main sticker shock comes from seeing this $10 a month for one month of access. But if you look at the other terms, three, six, 12, and 24 months, they end up coming out to between two and $5 a month equivalent. So as long as you don't pay for just one month of access, you'll end up spending only a few bucks a month for the subscription, which in my opinion is totally worth it. So if you want to take the plunge and try it out, go ahead to the On Air Company website linked in the description below. It is at onair.company and just hit the free trial button on the homepage to download the app and start a seven day trial. Then of course you can decide if you want to pay for it after that. So I've got the app downloaded and started up, and I'm going to show you what it looks like to start a company and do your first flight for the first time in On Air. This is the main interface you'll see whenever you start On Air Company. And the first thing it's showing us here is that there are actually three different worlds or kind of rule sets to play by. And you can have one company in every world. Now, the first one on the left here, Cumulus, this is the kind of easiest world. It says that you can use AI pilots. So that means that you don't have to fly every single flight yourself. You can actually manage a bunch of virtual employees. So computer players, basically AI or NPCs, and you can direct them at which flights to fly and you can have multiple pilots. So, you know, like you're running the airliner yourself and they're flying flights. And you can also optionally, of course, fly the flights yourself as a human pilot. Now, the difference between Cumulus and Stratus is just the difficulty. Cumulus, you earn money much more quickly, so it's a bit easier. Stratus is a little more challenging, so you don't earn as much money, so it'll take you longer to build up your cash and get new planes and stuff like that. And it also has leaderboards that are enabled because there's a little competition there if you want to participate in that. Now with both Cumulus and Stratus, if you're thinking about starting a virtual airline with your friends, you should know upfront that in either of those two worlds, you can only have a maximum of 10 employees or 10 participants in your virtual airline. So if you wanna start something where you can have more than 10 people as part of your virtual airline, then you need to use Thunder. And Thunder is the most challenging of the modes. It does not allow you to use AI or you know, the fake NPC employees to do any of the actual flights for you. All of the actual piloting has to be done by a human. And in addition to that, it has that same challenging economy that Stratus has. 
So for me, you can see that in the bottom right there, I actually have just one company called Kip on the Ground, and that is in the Thunder World. And that's mainly because I'm participating in a virtual airline, which is open. So if you want to learn about that, you can hit up our Discord and uh, come join the Couch Captains if you're looking for that kind of experience. Once you decide which world you want to start in, when you look at the bottom, you'll see you have two options. You can either start as a small company or as an airline. Small company is kind of the default way to start out, but if you want to jump straight into flying jets, you're going to want to choose the airline option instead. The only difference is really that with small company, you start with 10,000 credits, and as an airline, you start with 1.5 million credits, so it can get you into a jet faster. But one thing to know about the airline is that that 1.5 million credits comes in the form of a loan, so you will eventually have to pay that loan back. Since I want to have kind of the default experience of starting as a small time pilot in like a little single engine prop, I'm going to choose small company. I also fly GA more than I fly jets in Flight Simulator, so that just kind of fits my play style better anyway. But whichever one works for you, just hit the start button underneath it. So for me, I'm just going to press small company. So first we need to enter some details about our company. So just put in the company name. I'll just write on the ground for now. You can always change that later. And then you have to enter your airline code. This is something that is persistent. So you cannot change this later. And this will be the four digit, four letters and numbers code that your airline will be referred to within the world. Then after that, we can set our pilot name. So I'm just going to put Kip here. Then on the right, you can choose from these like hundred different little avatars that'll represent your character in the world. This is really just shown uh, when you're managing employees or when you look at the map. All right, and then birthday and flight experience. These things don't make too much of a difference, so you can just put in whatever you want. I'm gonna put in 700 hours. That's at this time about how many logged hours I have in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And this stuff just shows up in your profile when somebody looks at your employee. Doesn't make much of a functional difference. However, this second to last setting here, initial location, this is something you should think about. So first of all, I'm flying as a small company. So that means I'm going to start out in a small plane like a Cessna 172. Because of that, I don't really want my initial location to be like a giant airport like LAX or San Francisco. I want to be at a smaller airport where I can get in and out of it quickly. And I'm going to be doing smaller cargo runs and smaller amounts of passengers. So I don't want to spend all this time taxiing around LAX or Denver or something like that. I have some custom scenery at a small airport that I got in Florida a while back. So I'm going to use that airport code as my base. And that's Arcadia. And it's in Florida. And the code for that airport is X-Ray 06. So I'm going to put that in as my location. You may notice that it says size one. That's referring to the airport size. And in on-air company, it can be between zero and five. And if I go here to the online manual and just look up airport size, I'll get a table that shows us what this means. So it's just based off of the length of the longest runway at that airport. So for me, I can get away with something that's a zero or a one, but if you're flying a jet or something that requires a longer runway length, make sure that you set your home base to an airport that you'll actually be able to land at and take off from. All right, and then the last thing we need to pick is what simulator we're using. I'm using Microsoft Flight Simulator, but this is another great thing about on-air company. If you use multiple simulators or in the future you might change simulators, you're going to bring your entire profile, your whole career over with you to your other simulator. It's not tied to the sim and it's not just for one simulator. All right, so now that I'm all good there, I'm just going to hit the create button in the corner and we're going to load into our dashboard. So this is the main screen for On Air Company, and this is where you're going to start whenever you start the app. First of all, up here in the top left, there's this little home button, and this is what you click whenever you want to get back to this dashboard. When you're just starting out, this little tips section in the bottom left is really useful. It says that we should go to the market to get our first aircraft. And before we do that, I want to point out this section right here. This leads to our skills page. So we can see that we're at level one right now, of course, because we're brand new. So I'm going to click this to look at the skills tree. You can see at the top, it says we have one skill point to distribute. 
And on the left, we have kind of the first point you have to put in on the left side, and that unlocks the things down the tree. So there's little prerequisites here. So we have the bank loans agreement, FBOs, passenger license, and hiring agreement. Now, when you're first starting out, I think the most important thing to think about is, do you want to fly cargo? Do you want to fly passengers? Do you want to hire some AI pilots to do the flying for you? These kind of questions will determine what you want to unlock first. Whenever you hover your mouse over any of these skills, it'll tell you what that skill gives you. Now, if you wanted to start by flying AI pilots, you may want to spend your point in the hiring agreement at the bottom left. This one will give you the ability to hire freelancers and AI or NPC pilots to do the flights for you. And another option here is FBO's agreement. So FBO is a fixed base operator. It's basically a building on the, in the vicinity of the airfield where they provide services. So you could provide tie downs or hangers, you could provide mechanics, you could sell fuel, things like that. So the skill point you choose first will determine kind of your play style, what you want to do first. Do you want to do FBOs? Do you want to fly passengers? Do you want to hire AI pilots? For me, I'm just going to fly some cargo. Um, so for now, I'm not even going to need any of these. I'm just going to leave all this blank. I'll save that skill point for now, and I'll go find a plane that I can use just to fly cargo specifically. So I'm just going to click the little home button in the top left to go back to the dashboard. All right, and then back down here where it says tips, it says go to the aircraft market to get your first aircraft. So I'm just going to click on aircraft market. Now, this is an extensive list of all of the planes supported by On Air Company. I'm going to tick this box at the top that says show affordable aircraft only to make sure that we can rent something in this list to start. Since we only have 10,000 credits to our name right now, we can't go for the 747 or anything like that. But if you did start as an airliner, you'll have 1.5 million to use because of the loan that you got. So I'm going to find and click the 172 Skyhawk. Over here on the right, if I click this little button that says compatible add-ons, this may be important to you because every sim and every plane, there are mods and third-party versions of the plane, and on-air company supports tons of them. So it may be important to go in here and make sure that any mod you are using is supported. So in this case, you can see this one right here that says the Cessna 172 Reality Expansion Pack for X-Plane. So if you're flying that, you'll know that you know this is the correct plane to use for that expansion or that mod. Another way to do this to make sure that the plane you have loaded in your sim is the correct one that's mapped in this on-air company list is by just loading the plane in your simulator and clicking this button right here. It says, search for the aircraft I have loaded in my simulator. So you would just start your sim, load the plane that you want to fly, click that button, and it'll highlight which plane that maps to in On Air Company. So once you've figured out exactly which plane maps to the one you want to fly, you can go ahead and look on the right side here. So once I click the plane on the right side, we can see all the details for this plane, like uh, its fuel capacity, its range, and all sorts of stuff. But what we want to do is just hit this green button that says display the sell, rent, and lease offers. So we're going to try to find planes near us that we can rent. So this is going to automatically search the airplane marketplace for us to find a plane to rent. And you can see up here in the corner, it's actually done a few things automatically for us. It has limited our search to 100 nautical mile radius. And it says to only show airports that are available in my simulator. And then here, it's also put in Arcadia to search around our current airport where our pilot is located. Remember, I started at that airport in the setup. We can see how far away each plane is from Arcadia. We can see the selling price if that plane happens to be for sale. And then the rental price if it happens to be rentable. If you look at the one at the bottom here, you'll notice there's no rental price. So this means this one's not for rent. It can only be bought if we have 122,000 credits which we don't. So we need to rent to start. And then also in this owner column here, you can see that there's this one that says W9BS. This is actually another player. That's their company code and they own this plane. So if we decided to rent this one, then they would actually get the profits from that rental. But I'm actually gonna choose one that's not owned by another player because I wanna show you the plane configuration screen you get if you kind of rent your own plane from scratch instead of uh, one that's been configured by a player already. So once you find that plane that's rentable, go ahead and click on it. 
and that'll reveal all the details on the right side. So we can see all of the costs associated with it, the registration number, et cetera. We're not really concerned with this right now. We just wanna make sure that we can rent it. So below that in the bottom right where it shows prices, we can see our options. We can either rent or lease this specific plane. Leasing is like a four week commitment. We're not gonna do that just yet. The easiest way to get started is just by renting and we only pay per flight hour. So we can see here that the dry rent price, that means without fuel, so the tanks are dry, the rental price per flight hour is 240 credits. And because of that, there's a 2400 credit bond. That's a deposit to rent the plane. And we'll get that back when we finish the rental. So go ahead and click the rent button to get this started. And the first thing that'll come up is this little configuration window for the seat configuration. Now the three different classes of seats are economy, business, and first class. And in the Cessna 172, by default, there are three economy seats, and that takes up 100% of the seating capacity on the plane. We could actually reduce that and make it two first class seats instead. That would just mean that each of those passengers pays more per passenger. So if I change that eco seating from three to two, you'll also notice that gives us extra cargo capacity. That seat takes up 63 pounds. And when we remove it, that means we can only carry two passengers, but we'll carry more cargo. If I change that to zero and give us a no seat option, we'll get an extra 189 pounds from the reduced weight because we took the actual seats out. Now we can carry more cargo. And that's what I'm gonna do with this plane to start. I'm only gonna carry cargo and no passengers. And because I removed the seats, we can carry more than we otherwise would be able to. Up here near the top, there's this little checkbox and text that says, teleport my pilot to the aircraft's location and generate a return job. This is something that happens for the very first flight you do as kind of a courtesy and a time saver. So what this is gonna do is take our pilot from Arcadia and bring him to the airport that's 49 miles away where this airplane is actually at that we're renting. So it's gonna teleport us there instantly. And it's also going to create a first job for us to fly. And that job is going to be taking us from that airport back to Arcadia so we can get this plane back to our home base and earn some money as our first mission. So I'm just going to hit confirm for our seating configuration. It's going to rent the plane and then it's going to take us to this screen called my aircraft. And we can see that we have one plane listed. This is the Skyhawk that we just rented. So this seems like a pretty blank screen right now, but over time you can imagine how big this screen could get. We could have dozens and dozens of planes that we have rented that we are flying or that our AI pilots are flying or that members of our virtual airline are flying and they'll all be listed here. So once again, I'm gonna to return to the dashboard by hitting the home button in the top left. And then we're gonna look back at that little tips section at the bottom to see what it says we should do next. And it's pointing out that we now have one pending job. We can also see that here in the middle where it says jobs. So it now says pending one. And next to it, we can see we have one plane rented. So another quick way to get to the pending job screen is by using this button, little shortcut bar at the top. You'll find yourself using these all the time. The first one is for your plane list. So my aircraft. And the last one is for pending jobs. So this is a quick way to get to our pending jobs list. So I'm gonna click on this. So here we can see that one job that was created automatically for us. It goes from the location of our plane, that's at two Romeo Romeo, down to our base, which is Arcadia. So we can see on the left that there's just one job in this list. And this is a special kind of job. If you point at this little icon, we can see that it says that it's a mission, level one mission. These mission jobs are the quickest way to build up your cash and your experience to kind of level up your skill tree. And in the next video, we will look at the other types of jobs that you'll mostly be doing. But these mission jobs are basically like the story mode of On Air Company. This mission is gonna pay us 2,200 credits. And to start it, all we have to do is hit the little plus button over here to expand it to see the details of this job. So this one is really simple because it's just one leg, but in the future, you'll have jobs that could have many legs to them. And you need to complete each leg or each requirement for that job in order to complete that mission. 
So for us, we just have one leg. We're gonna deliver 478 pounds of cargo. So I'm just gonna click this little airplane button right here that says start the flight. And now it's asking us which plane from this airport that we're at do we wanna to use to start this flight. So I'm just gonna choose our Cessna 172. That's the only plane that we have. So we just moved from the pending job screens to the flight preparation page. This is where we can plan out and actually load our cargo and our fuel. Here in the top left, we can see all of the payloads that are available at the airport we're at. So we're at two Romeo Romeo right now. Any cargo that's available for us here from any job that we have pending will be shown in this list. Right now, we just have this one thing of cargo we're taking. And this little checkbox here is how you plan and see how much this will take up in your weights. So as I check this little box on and off, you can see the numbers under the weights section in the middle update to show us if we load this, how much will our total weight be and how much will we have available? So when I tick it, you can see the available weight goes down from 700 down to about 300 pounds. Now this isn't loading it yet, it's just showing us a plan of what will happen once we validate the fuel with that button at the bottom. Also at the top, as I move this slider here, you can see it loading more fuel in. So as we do this, we can see the numbers again for our weights and balances changing. And in addition to that, at the top, it'll show us our expected range or how far we can fly with this fuel in this plane. So this is saying that it'll give us a range of 156 nautical miles, including 30 minutes of reserve fuel. This is just a rough estimate, so I wouldn't rely on that range too seriously, but it is three times as much range as we need for this job. This job is only going 49 miles. It says 156, so we definitely have enough fuel for this. So now that I have that figured out, we have enough fuel and we have the cargo ticked on the left, all we have to do is hit the validate fuel and payload button at the bottom. And this will actually start the process of loading the fuel, passengers, and cargo into the plane. Once that's finally done, the right side will update and you'll see this fly now button. Now at the top, this is where you choose the pilot that's flying. So in this case, it's us. If you end up with any AI employees or pilots in the future, that's where you can choose them to be the one to fly it. And if you're on Cumulus or Stratus, you'll actually be able to just tell them to fly it and they'll just start the flight. There's also a section to choose cabin attendants and bring along other people from your company on the flight if you want as passengers, but we don't have any of that right now. If you fly an airliner, you will need cabin attendants. And then down here, you can see our destination and alternate airports are set automatically for us. One last thing you can do before you hit the fly now button is choose a time offset. So, you know, this is useful if you fly, say, after work and it's generally nighttime. If you use real world time for your flight sim, this is a way that per flight you can decide to roll back the clocks. So because it's getting dark in Florida when I'm recording this in real time, I'm just gonna do a minus three hour offset. So rewind the clocks a little bit once we start the flight. And now I'll just hit fly now, and this will start and bring us to the flight tracking page. While you're doing all of this setup in On Air Company, you could have your sim running, or in my case, I didn't have it running at all, so I just now started it up. I'm gonna go and choose the Cessna 172, and I'm just gonna pick this blue livery. And then all I'm gonna do is put in our departure airport to Romeo Romeo as my departure. And something you should always do with On Air Company is to start at parking. Because if you start with the engines already started on the runway, it'll actually give you a small reputation penalty for doing that because it's unrealistic. You need to start at parking, cold and dark. So down here, I'm gonna choose a parking spot instead of an active runway. All right, now we're all loaded into the plane. So I had to make sure that I chose the 172. Remember, that's the plane that we said we would be flying. That's the plane that we rented in On Air Company. So therefore, that's the plane we need to make sure we load into the simulator with. So what I need to do is get this started. So when we go back here and we're on the tracking screen, basically at this top center area here, we're looking for all green check boxes. This is where it's basically setting all of the conditions for our plane to make sure it's configured the way that it should be. So that means that it has the right amount of fuel, the right amount of payload, so our cargo, 
the right model plane, like we talked about before, you can look at the add-ons list or have it detect which one is in your simulator. So you make sure you purchase or rent the correct plane in on our company. And then once we're ready, we can just hit the start tracking button in the top right. If you want to manually determine where the weight gets loaded in your plane, you can click this weight and balance button right here. This is a little bit advanced, but if you want to decide how the weight is distributed in the plane, you can use this section to do that. So if, for instance, I wanted to put some of the weight more towards the middle of the plane instead of having it all the way in the back, I could, for example, remove 100 pounds from the cargo section, which is at the rear of the plane, and then add that 100 pounds, distributing it between the left and right passenger seats. So I'll go ahead and remove 100 pounds from cargo, and then I'll put 50 pounds in passenger left and passenger right. And once that red text at the top is no longer red, then I'll know I have it set so it matches 479 on both. Then I can hit OK. Now when I start tracking, when it loads the plane up, it's gonna put it in those specific locations. So because I have the right plane loaded at the right location, I'm able to start tracking. And when I hit start tracking, it's gonna automatically load the fuel and the payload for us. And it's also gonna change the time of day because on that previous screen, I said I wanted it to go back in time three hours. So I'll hit start tracking and you can see the propeller kind of push up into the air. That's a result of the fuel and the payload being added to the plane. So that's how we can kind of confirm that yes, on air actually did load it in. If you do go into the fuel and weights menu in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will not reflect the weight that's been loaded for the payload. The fuel will be accurate, but the other weights will not. But that's just kind of a bug that's in there right now. But you can rest assured that it is actually loading that cargo in as we saw with the plane moving. So now that the flight has finally started tracking, we're actually ready to go. What I can do is hit flight data in the top left if I want to reveal some more information on the current flight that's being tracked. So that'll show our you know, airports, our payload, and any flight events that happen. So if we make any mistakes or there are any notable events during the flight, like a stall or anything like that, those kind of things will show up here in this log. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the plane started up. I'm just gonna use the Control E shortcut in Microsoft Flight Simulator to quickly get it started. Until you land and, shut down the engines. and you can hear Honor Company telling us that the flight is being monitored and it'll continue to be monitored until we shut down the engines. So when we land and get to parking and turn the engines off, that's when it will complete the flight for us. So now that the flight is tracking, all that's left for us to do is to actually do the whole flight. And for this flight, I decided to use time acceleration. This is something that is allowed in on-air company, but it does change when your pilot is available next. So if I use time acceleration and say it shaves off 30 minutes of time from my flight, whereas it would have taken me that much longer to actually do the flight in real time, what happens is once you land, it'll actually hold the plane and the pilot for those extra 30 minutes of real time until you can use them again. All right, once we touch down here, you'll hear on air company talk to us. Landing time log. So it tells us that the landing time was logged. And once that happens, all we have to do is go and shut down the engines. So here I'm going to parking and I'm just gonna pull the mixture out to shut the engine down and we'll hear it come back again and give us confirmation of that. Engine off time logged. The flight is finished. It has been monitored by on air. Now we can return to our on air company window and then we're given this completed flight screen. So on the right side, it gives us a bunch of statistics about our landing. And you can see that my landing speed was higher than expected. So it isn't giving me as many bonuses for my reputation as it would if I uh, had a better landing. And then on the left side, we kind of see a log of everything notable that happened. I got some things like a comfort bonus for flying smoothly. Thank you, autopilot. But I can also see that I actually got a negative reputation for one thing right here. It says that my beacon and my strobe were off when I started the engine. So normally you have your beacon light on when you turn your engine on, and I forgot to do that. So right there, it's a minus 0.03% reputation. And we can also see the message above that that says you use an accelerated simulation rate because I sped up time. So it says the flight is in warp mode. So that's where it's delayed until 2331 UTC. So I'm going to hit OK here and that'll take me back to the dashboard. 
And then here, because I used warp mode, you can see that job is still pending. It's not considered completed yet. So all I have to do is go check the plane. So I'm gonna click my aircraft in the top shortcuts up here. And now we can see the list of aircraft and there's a little purple status icon here. So this is the warp mode icon. And this is just telling me that this is not completed yet because I used time acceleration. So I just waited to watch that status change. You can see it says flying still as well, which of course I'm not. And there we go, it's just updated to say that the plane is now landed. This orange icon is apron work, so that means that it's being actively loaded or unloaded. And now it changes to green to show that that's completed and the plane is now available to be used again. Same with our pilot. All right, so we've successfully completed our first flight. What I can do now is go back to our dashboard. So I'm gonna hit the little home icon in the top left again to get back there. All right, now here we can see we actually got promoted to level two. So that gives us more skill points. If I click on that at the top, it now says we have three skill points to distribute instead of just the one that we started with. So I'm gonna spend some of these points now. First, I'm going to hit the little plus next to hiring agreement because in the next video, I wanna show you how to use AI or NPC pilots to do some flights for us so we can maximize how much we're earning. So I'm just gonna hit the little blue plus sign there. And then above that, there is the passenger's license. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock passenger jobs as well. And when you're done doing that and spending your points, make sure you hit the save button in the bottom right corner. All right, back on our dashboard, we can see our next tip says that the fastest way to get started is to complete more missions. So that's what we just did was the first mission. It had that little trophy icon in our jobs list. And these are basically kind of the story mode to get you started and give you a lot of money and XP to get your company going. So I'll go back to the pending jobs list here and we can see it's generated our second mission. So this is a level two mission now. And if we expand this row using the plus button on the left side, and you can also see this in the map on the right, this one has two different legs we need to fly. So we have to deliver from our current airport to another one. Then we have to pick up cargo at that airport and take it to a third destination. So those two legs have to be completed before we'll earn that money and that XP bonus for that mission. In the next video in this series, I'm gonna show you how to use AI pilots if you're playing on the Cumulus or Stratus servers, and also how to use the Logistics Center to pick from hundreds of other jobs to fly. I hope you found this video useful as an introduction to On Air Company, and I hope you're gonna give the trial a go and see if you like it as much as I do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.